Now, lastly, smooth muscle. So we've also already talked about this type of muscle. Um, compared to skeletal muscle, it is much smoother. Um, the cells, instead of being really long or branched um, like cardiac muscle or striated like the other two, they're smooth and then they're spindle shaped. So that's how you can recognize this. They're also a little bit smaller than so spindle kind of like that with one nuclei in there. Um, they're also going to have some other features kind of at the molecular level. So differences in their sarcoplasm reticulum and T-tubules um, and no gap junctions. There's no striations because there's no sarcomeres. There are overlapping thick and thin filaments, but the myosin is much shorter with more myosin heads. So it just looks a little different. Um, I'll show that in just a minute. But so there still are thick and thin filaments, but they're arranged differently. So you don't see those striations due to the sarcomeres. One thing is kind of like a um, gross anatomy thing. You've seen smooth muscle in lab, um, looked like kind of like this, a lot kind of harder to distinguish, but you can kind of see like an individual cell there. Um, this is, and actually what you have seen is confused by the fact that there's both longitudinal sections of muscle cells. And that's what I've um, kind of tried to prime you, encourage you mostly to look at in lab. Um, that is these spindle shapes. But you also, in most smooth muscle places, there's also a circular layer, it's called. So this is a longitudinal layer. There are, is a separate layer of smooth muscle that is called the circular layer because it is oriented the other direction. So this is the outer layer here where they're actually, instead of being arranged this way, they're arranged this way. Um, this is actually important for function because these muscles are really lining all of our internal organs that need to move. So digestive system is a, a big one, all the way from the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine. Um, we have other places where there's sphincters that contract or an open um, glands that open and close where we need movement. Um, but digestive system is a good, really good example where we want to be able to move food or whatever we call it at that point down this tube while also like mixing and churning. So having muscle layers going different directions helps us with that. Um, so an important feature of smooth muscle is also that it's involuntary, right? We're not controlling these digestive processes or release of um, digestive juices or other, other secretions. This means it is controlled by the autonomic nervous system as well, just like cardiac muscle. Okay, so one more slide for smooth muscle, a little bit about the physiology um, that's quite different than skeletal muscle. Not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but um, it is different in terms of that neuromuscular junction we talked about in skeletal muscle is not present in smooth muscle. Instead, there are these varicosities. So right here, it's the world, right? A little bit bigger here. Varicosities. These are swellings um, that are kind of all along the neuromuscular junction. They're not called that, but there is a junction of the nervous system with the, the smooth muscle. Um, they're really just swellings that are filled with neurotransmitter. So these are going to um, kind, of, kind of diffuse junctions that sprinkle. I, just like, I like that term. They're going to sprinkle what? What, what? what is a sprinkle onto the muscle? Neurotransmitter, right? That's what neurons release onto the muscle, um, the smooth muscle cell. So just to uh, actually make this a little bit more apparent here, this would be a smooth 
motor neuron coming in here. And um, these would be those, those varicosities that are filled with um, neurotransmitter that can then be sprinkled onto the muscle tissue. Um, then the physiology of the smooth muscle is a little bit different. There is, like I said, less elaborate smooth ER. There are no T tubules. Um, so what's happening there is a little bit different. And then when we have contraction happen, I mentioned this already, there is actually no troponin. Instead, we're going to have calcium bind to calmodulin. which is a different protein, calcium modulated protein, um, that is going to activate myosin kinase, which is going to phosphorylate the myosin heads. So that is similar to our skeletal muscle, so myotin, myosin kinase, so that we can phosphorylate our myosin head and they can bind to actin. So that initiation step. So phosphorylated hmm. myosin binds to actin. So we still have those thick and thin filaments. Jeez. And we can then have um, once actin and myosin are bound to each other, we can have those power strokes similar to skeletal muscle. One other difference is those, the actin is bound to these dense bodies. So let's see, that's, that's right here, right here is our thin filaments. This is actin. It's bound to these dense bodies. So when we have those start to do power strokes and contract, instead of our sarcomeres shortening, um, instead of that, we've got this kind of mesh bag squished worm type of thing. Um, and again, you can kind of see here now from these, these filaments, how they're aligned, why we don't have striations. The arrangement's just different and it's gonna result in this kind of thing when shortening. So this results in a pretty low power output compared to skeletal muscle, but also sustained contractions and contractions that are able to happen you know, pretty subtly, like we don't always notice um, things moving through our digestive system, although we do sometimes. So um, sustained contractions over a long time and also maintaining muscle tone um, so that we maintain the like, integrity of our um, digestive organs and sphincters and stuff. 